Right. Good afternoon, everybody, and thank you for joining us this lunchtime for our webinar on Analyzed Bus Open Data Service. And today we're going to be looking at the vehicle journey functionality. I'm Tim Rivett. I'm your host for this afternoon, and I run Artig on a day to day basis. And we are hosting this uh, event on behalf of the Department of Transport and ETO World. Um, we are recording this session so that uh, you can uh, look back um, if you need a refresher or share it with colleagues that can't be with us live. Uh, there will be plenty of opportunity for you to uh, ask questions and we do want this to uh, to, to try and answer as many of your questions as you can. So uh, during the uh, presentation part, if you please uh, use the chat, uh, we will uh, endeavour to uh, answer questions as we go along or uh, at the end. And if we can't, then we will get back to you. So um, for those of you that haven't come across Artig before, we're a membership organisation for public transport technology stakeholders, anybody with an interest in public transport technology. Um, we've got members that range from uh, Department of Transport and Transport for Wales through to bus operators, local authorities, suppliers and consultants, basically the whole gamut of uh, people involved in the sector. And we uh, set out to try and make sure that people know how to use technology in public transport by educational events, events like this. Uh, we hold face to face events. We develop standard technical standards and best practice guidance uh, and work with UK and European standards bodies to help develop the technical uh, standards that people use on a day to day basis. Um, that, that is a very quick uh, introduction to Artig. Um, you've not come to find out about us, you've come to find out about uh, the Analyze Bus Open Data Service. So at this point, I'm going to hand over to Ito, who are the DFT's technical partner, to deliver this. And we've got James, Patrick and Lisa from Ito who are going to be uh, doing the, uh, the work from here on. Great. Thank you very much, Tim. And hi, everyone. Um, for those of you I haven't met, I'm James um, Dashwood, Product Manager for ABOD. Um, and we've got uh, Patrick and Lisa from Customer Success here as well to help answer your questions. And I think just wanted to start by saying this is largely um, a forum for you to give feedback on vehicle journeys if you have used it. And if you haven't, what you might find useful from something like that and how it can add value to your to your working lives. Um, so I, I'm going to do a quick demo. It's not going to be more than five minutes, but but really the, the kind of meat of this, I'd like to be uh, a discussion about the value, uh, the current value of, of vehicle journeys as a feature and the, and the future value of it and, and how we can uh, increase that going forwards and, and working in conjunction with you. But I think just to say as a brief history of, of vehicle journeys, it was released, um, I think it was around about the beginning of December, and it's very quickly become um, the most used feature of ABOD by a, a, a factor of three. Um, so it's it's very popular, um, it's very insightful, and I think it 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 gives a degree of transparency, which, which previously there wasn't, being able to see individual vehicle journeys and the pings along the route. Um, so, yeah, and and you know we know that there are lots of things that we can do to make this more useful for you. Um, and we've got various different things in the roadmap, which I'm not going to mention until I've listened to to what what you've got to say and and any um, requests you might have or or areas with, that you feel are a problem or, or or things that we need to address. Because I don't want to um, put ideas in your head, so I'd, I'd I'd like this to be an open space, and then maybe at the end we can talk about how that coincides with our roadmap and 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 um, anything else like that. So without further ado, I'm just going to quickly share um, and we'll have a quick look at vehicle journeys and then I'll and then I'll open it up to the floor. Um, so 
this is the initial um, filtering page for vehicle journeys, which is going to be improved. Currently, it can be slightly frustrating sometimes as you can get to the end and, and the journey not be there. This is one that I hope Stagecoach won't mind me using. It's um, a pretty good one. So you can search for any operator on any day. I think it has to be the day previous to today. Um, you can do today. Um, and so this is the 24th of February, Scunthorpe to Yaddlethorpe, 7.10. So, hmm, that one's not so good. That one's better. Um, so it defaults to timing points. It used to be all stops, but it defaults to timing points now. And you can obviously see scheduled time versus actual time. There's no data for this one for some reason. People have asked how we calculate this delay, whether we round down, we round up, how we do it. What we do is we just chop off the seconds. So you can see here that the calculated delay was three minutes and 53 seconds. So we've just chopped off the 53. So it's saying three minutes. Um, so that's how it's rounded. Um, the map is color coded. Um, so on time is purple, uh, late is yellow, and early is the sort of pinky color. Um, all of this is on time. Um, and we can change it to all stops. And then you can again see scheduled versus actual, which it seems to me is is what most people want to know generally with AVOD is what is the difference between my scheduled times and what is actually happening out there on the roads. Um, and then how can I improve it? Um, so this is this is it in a nutshell. I mean, it it it's fairly simple. It's taken a bit of work to get here. Um, if I zoom in on the map, um, I can see the actual pings as well. Um, and then of course I can see the bus stops. Um, we have yet to add shape data to this, so that's coming. Um, if anyone's wondering why these straight lines are not following the road, that is a feature that is yet to come. As I said, there's lots of things that we have planned in the works to make this more useful, to make this more accurate, to make this more transparent. I'm not going to go through exactly what they are now because I just like to sort of open up a discussion on on what you guys feel would be the most useful things that we could do from here. If you have used it, great. Maybe we could talk a bit about your experience of using it. And if you haven't, that's absolutely fine too. Um, so I think maybe we open it up to the floor now. Um, so yeah, if anyone wants to ask a question, either just ask a question or you can type it in the chat or raise raise your yellow hand. Either way, I think any any of those work. Thanks, James. I was just going to read out uh, Phil's message um, just to say that this facility is very useful, but there is a real need for a change way, quick way of changing the date so that you can shuttle through the same journey on different dates and times. At the moment, changing the date is very cumbersome. Yes, so I mean, I said I wasn't going to talk about features that we have planned coming up, but this is certainly something that we do have coming up. So uh, I'll just go back to um, how it works currently, because you're right, Phil, um, it is somewhat cumbersome. Um, so currently, um, I have to go out of this screen to change the date and I can only service, uh, I can only shuttle through the previous journeys that are um, on this line. So we're going to have a few more filters here um, and change where the date is selected. So it will be in within this page, but you'll be able to flip to um, a journey that either came next chronologically, as in this instance, or one that followed exactly the same service pattern or indeed one that was exactly the same uh, vehicle. Um, so there are a few different things that we can, sorry, I wasn't sharing my screen. I thought I had shared my screen, um, but there are a few different things I think that we can use to allow you to navigate to journeys more easily. 
Thanks. I think uh, Phil's also just got his hand up. Uh, I don't know if you just wanted to to add to that, Phil. Yes. Um, the what we really need is a way of shuttling through the dates, like you can shuttle through the times. Uh, top mm. right, you've got you can just do a right arrow or left arrow. That's really quick. That was really useful. But then just to to change the date was just the complete opposite. You had to go right back out of it, select the service, select the yeah. the date, etc. And so that put me off using it completely. But it was so annoying, sh such a shame because I looked at it and thought, oh, I can instantly see that's where this bus is getting early. And it's and ironically yeah. at the moment I'm more worried about early running than late running. Yeah, Thank thanks, you. Phil. No, that's that's we we've heard that before, certainly. So that is that is very much in the roadmap. Um, Martin, looking at the on-time data being sixty-two point five percent, shouldn't it be a hundred percent? As you don't count no data. Um, yeah, that is correct, Patrick. Do you fancy addressing this one? Yeah, just having a just having a quick read of that message. So there was thirty seven point five percent no data and sixty two point five percent on time. So I believe I believe what that was saying, and I can't quite remember what was being displayed on on that journey uh, vehicle journey, but that will essentially mean that I think all of the stops recorded with an actual should have been marked as on time. Um, I, yeah, I, unfortunately, I don't know if you're able to, James, if you're able to pull up that example again. Yeah. But um, uh, effectively, um, if if all of the stops had a departure recorded and they were all on time, that would be an on time performance for that journey of 100 um, percent. But yeah, uh, I think it, I, I assume that if it was 37. Um, 0.5 percent of 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 no data so no no departures uh, recorded from those stops yeah that's correct so the 37.5 percent is where we didn't have enough data to accurately say the bus departed that stop so there was no actual i'm just yeah i'm just having a very quick look now i don't know if you're able to scroll down james i believe that every I can't see a late recorded actual on those. I don't know if you could change the panel because right now we're just displaying uh, timing points. Uh, if you could scroll up, James, and then just click on all stops. And then this will. But just to clarify, the no data will not contribute to the punctuality. We're just displaying that on this view. I, yeah, yeah, I, 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 it's a, a very, very good point, Martin. I know what, I know the point you're getting at, which I've actually spotted as well. Um, it doesn't seem that there's any late or early departures. Um, I don't know, because uh, I can, I can definitely see what Martin's highlighting. To me, it looks like every single stop is on time, but we're showing an on time percentage of 78.21. Yeah. Um, what Martin's point is, this should be showing 100. Um, yeah. yeah, yeah, thank you. Thank you, Martin. That's that's a very, very valid point, and we'll we'll definitely be following that up. Can I make a comment here, Tim? I've, I've put a comment yeah. in and it's exactly the same. What you've done here is you're including the percentage of not actually yeah. being recorded within the calculation. Yet when yeah. you do the other calculation, you exclude yeah. that from it. They're both yeah. done differently. It's yes. My later question was why? I yeah. think you've answered it by looking puzzled yourselves. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, uh, that's that's we we are not we are not meaning and won't be intending on allocating no data as as a part of the on-time performance that is to to remain separate so thank you for highlighting that martin michael you've had your hand up i i just made my comment uh, tim because that's yeah. exactly the same point i got further <laughs> down and yeah. it's because okay. one percentage is included and the other one isn't yeah okay uh in which case ricky Hello, good afternoon. Um, to be fair, it didn't take me long to work out what you were actually showing because um, you hover over it. I think do, do the public get to see this, this this um, tab? 
No. But no, so it's just people like ourselves, local authorities and bus operators. Right? Yeah, okay. yeah. Yeah, I, I think it needs changing. I think you probably just need to leave maybe both lines in there. Um, it's slightly confusing as you're just looking at it now. I'm, I've got it up and now I'm just picking a totally different trip, but obviously it's showing exactly the same kind of scenario. Um, so, yeah, it's useful, but I think just to have it show the on-time bits better would be. Yeah. So you don't have to explain no, it then, do you? It's like you've got to put a, an explanation there just to explain to somebody who, who might not have worked it out. We didn't test that. Yeah. All right. Thank you. I think we just um, kind of like read. Oh. Just one from Tony about shape data. Would you need to increase the frequency of pings and we can get it correctly snapping to the roads? So, no, we can. Um, I mean, obviously, uh, it is dependent on us receiving the shape data, but it's not necessarily reliant on pings. Um, so, and can we? export this shape data to then compare with scheduled registered routes. Um, I'm not sure about that. Lisa and Patrick, do you know anything about that? I don't think you can export shape data because it would be in um, it would have to be in a very specific format to be able to do that. So I'm not sure if we would be able to. We can obviously export. We will. I think um, it is on the roadmap, isn't it, James, to be able to export the figures. But actually yeah. extracting the shape data, I think, is a little bit more difficult and something we can obviously explore. Um, but we'd have to be very careful about what formats we provided it in. Certainly exporting of general uh, data in vehicle journeys. So at what time it was scheduled and what time it departed for a, uh, a set time period is is certainly on the roadmap. The other thing, just back to shape data, is that we if we haven't received shape data, um, so we're, what we do in that instance is just plot a straight line between bus stops, which is obviously wrong 100% of the time. What we're looking at doing is, is a kind of a matching of GPS pings to uh, a scheduled route so that we can infer um, shape data. Now, let pe other people have done this. Um, I saw something on, on, on GitHub the other day. Um, it's technically possible if we're getting GPS pings and we know that the route um, has has been scheduled in a certain way. We can match those up. There will be some errors some of the time if the bus goes on a detour and we don't have sufficient pings. But I think it'll be more accurate than more accurate more of the time than drawing straight lines between bus stops. So I think the 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 key takeaway from that is if you are providing bods in your timetable data with the track data that follows the road geography, then ABODs will use that and present yeah. it so that it looks right on the roads. And that's the yeah. that's the key thing to make this work as effectively as possible. And then just one more in the in the chat um, missing from the timetable on the left was the time the system thinks that the bus actually departed from the start point. Um, let me just go back to that. Yeah, I think that was just uh, missing data. So I think if we find another journey, I'm hoping that we'll be able to find it. Um, on all the ones I went through, it was it, it, was, al it was always missing. And yeah, I could understand you might not want to do the calculation on that because one of the problems with the timing at the terminus is that is the time that the last ping was at the terminus, not the time the bus actually left. Um, but it gives you an indication, particularly if the bus was running late. It's worth having it just even if you don't calculate of it. That's a very good point. I'll make a note of that. I think as well, looking at it, it looked like you then didn't get all the estimated data further down the route until uh, until the next um, timing point. But I didn't go into that level of detail. OK. Um, yeah, we'll, we'll definitely explore that. Um, I can't see any more. Is there any more hands? Richard? There's, there's one more hand, but I'm just typing a message. Um, OK. <laughs> I'll, I'll read it out and I'll, I'll put effort into typing it. Um, can I quickly show an example of um, 
something on screen from BODS from a trip from this morning. Um, yeah. We've got an, early, an example of an early observation when it's clearly on your screen at the stop on time. Does it take, I'm looking at ticket for the same trip on this screen and I'm looking for, and I'm pointing and I've got my camera on. Hang on a minute. I'm, I'm, I'm doing physical movements and you can't see me. So I've got ticketer on this screen and I've got BODS on this screen. Um, Comparing the two, ticket has got a 50 meter uh, geofence. Anyhow, you you were 25, which you confirmed on last week's call, which is good. But still, in yours, um, we are actually on the stop with your little stopwatch at the time of departure. Yet we've moved from a little bit of a layover area, and that's when it's captured the 552 observation. Now, if I'm right, and Tim, put me wrong if I'm not, Vix doesn't take the first observation. So it, it takes the last one. I mean, you've got four, five observations. I'll share the screen, if you don't mind. You've got five observations of on time, well within your 25 metres, yeah. even though you can't see where the geofence is, which would be a, a useful addition if you can. Yeah. Um, but this bus was supposed to leave at 5.55, and it's been calculated at 5.52. It was over here in the layover at 5.52. Taking the over, first actual. It came over here at 5.54, which would have been all them four and that one when it's probably departed at 5.56. On time, but you've got it wrong. So this is um, a known issue in the system and it is logged with our um, developers and they are working on a fix as we speak. It's one of their highest priority um, issues to fix at the moment. Right, OK. Right, I'll stop sharing. Thank you. Thanks. But Vic system, if, sorry, sorry, not Tim, to put me right, Vic system used to take the, the, the last one. So they they do something with geofencing um, to, uh, to, to try and avoid this different systems use different approaches um yeah. to uh to overcome the problem where you've got a stationary vehicle and gps keeps bouncing all over the place because you're in a you know you're in a cover in a covered bus station or uh around high buildings or an area with poor gps coverage um so there's various tricks to uh to overcome it are was, we I, do we I do we just, take or take any lessons from established real time systems to get this to what they've learned over the years? Yeah, I was I was just going to briefly add as well, Richard, if 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 you'd be happy to, um, if you could just send us the, the URL of that vehicle journey example as well. We'll make sure to record that example um, to the ticket that we have logged at the moment with our, with our development team. And, I'll put um, it. Oh, yeah. sorry. Just to add in um, about learning from all the other different systems, that's what our developers are doing at the moment. They're trying to figure out what is going to be the best solution, basically, and that's what we're working on at the moment. OK, thank you. And also, anyone that's that's willing to i'd love to talk to you about your experience of using abod vehicle journeys versus another piece of software to understand how we might make improvements um because i think there is nothing more valuable for for us and for, for the product than speaking to people who are actually using it who've got experience with other systems of ways of doing it better um that's that's super helpful for us going forwards um and and on that point, I just wanted to to kind of put it out there so that we could try and understand. I mean, I already think I understand, but I, it's always interesting to hear back from actual users of, of what people are using vehicle journeys for. What's the value that, that a tool like this can bring you? Um, and once we really understand that, it, it opens up a world of kind of solutions to, to issues or, or create more value for you, the end user. So does anyone want to put their hand up or type in why they currently use vehicle journeys, why they might want to use a tool like this at any point, what they want to get out of something like this? Is it to export data? Is it used to persuade um, 
stakeholders? Is it used to uh, identify network improvements? Is it used to improve timetables? What are the what are the kind of what's the end result of using a tool like this? So we've got hands up from Michael. A couple of things. I think you're actually underselling what you've got here because you picked a trip that was all on time. <laughs> and one of the elements, if you pick the trip that's got late running and early running on it, the colours and all that are actually quite informative. Yeah. And that would have been that would have been a deeper dive for you on this. Um on the to the gentleman that talked about the departing from bus station early, that's an issue that we've had, and you're aware of that. But also the other thing I will say, if there is somewhere along line of route where the bus hesitates and waits for time. Uh, that often is the same sort of problem, depending when the ping is. The driver will be sitting there to his allotted departure time, but he will probably be shown as leaving early or can be. It's something worth looking into if anyone gets data and they think that's um, right or wrong. Yeah. But overall, I think what you've got here is I find it very powerful. And a lot better than just the high level bland figures that you've got in the previous outburst of bond. Hey, Bobs. Thanks, Michael. Well, on, on that note, I'll just quickly show um, a journey which does have um, some late running. You see that? Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. yeah, so obviously colour coded and, and the colours are the, the same throughout ABOD. Um, so yeah, interestingly this kind of, once it got late, it, it stayed late, but yeah. Well that's, and that, that is a very good example of what, how useful it is, that you can see those people who are good at analysing statistics can go off the statistical information, but a picture says a thousand words. Words, and I can see from that one that, um, and particularly if we can then shuttle between the, the same journey the previous day and then the day before that, if the same pattern of colours is there, it's so obvious what you've got to do with it. And that, and I was using it just simply because I, I was trying to put the finishing touches to a particular timetable and there was one journey that I couldn't work out what the pattern was of late or early running and that showed it me immediately. So it was excellent for that. So someone's asked a question, sorry I'll go back into the, the chat. Um, Richard, can it show data for a service for the day? So not now, unfortunately, it's just journey by journey by journey. Um, we are working on a plan to allow you to see a particular service pattern over the course of whatever you would like between three and five in a day over a course of 24 hours. There will be issues with data and latency over a, a too long a period of time, but certainly more than one journey is very much on the horizon. Um, Good, because as, as much as it, it possibly is powerful to, to some people, if you've got, I mean, we, we've got lots of services, uh, and if yeah. you want to understand where there's a pattern going through each trip, trip by trip by trip, every 10 minutes or every five minutes on a corridor and stuff like that, it's if this something like this can actually say that this particular section is where you always run early or this particular section is where you always run late, then it's looking at trip by trip. It could just be that trip that, that gets caused. Yeah, sports. no, no, totally. I mean, that that is that is definitely something that we, we know is important. Um, and just on that, what would be the. If you if you can, what would be the kind of end, end product of some some exploring of, of a, say a week's worth of, of vehicle journeys what would you do with that would you need to export it would you would you need to share it i think export would be good um how we share it probably depends on how it's exported yep. um if we can get it in excel or csv then we've yep. got people including myself that can put it in some kind of more shareable um spreadsheet Right. Well, I mean, obviously, yes. in time, you guys can probably come up with a dashboard that will 
that will present it in a way that it will be all fancy and even more powerful. Yeah, yeah. I mean, certainly we can do CSVs pretty much off the bat, but but yeah, we are thinking about how we can display the data in more attractive and kind of persuasive ways, um, which you would be able to decide whether it's a pie chart or a bar chart or a whatever it is. Um, oh, monitoring evaluation of active travel schemes on bus services. Ah, this is the value of, of potentially uh, vehicle journeys. What would be useful is time period function to compare time period and bench product. Well, that's yeah, that's what what Richard said. So that's great. Um, are there any more hands up? I don't think so. Michael, um, just being slightly devil's advocate, has the DFT actually committed funding for future developments? Or do you have to go away and justify what you're doing? Or have they given you a certain amount to go away and come up with a good product? Uh, we we actually have a renewal coming up, so we're slightly in the dark at the moment um, about that. We're not we're not sure what's going to happen with ABOD. Um, so, yeah, um, I, I, I couldn't tell you more than that. Right, so it, it's sort of um, this would be nice if only you your contracts renewed basically yeah i yeah. think that's that's probably oh triumphs here <laughs> Hi, okay. um, good I, I won't pin you down on your uh, contractual arrangements so <clears throat> um just like jim has said um there's a renewal coming up um where <clears throat> we intend to go through a a, a full robust uh, procurement process uh, that being said, um, the department is, con is committed to continuing continuing ABODs, irrespective of what the result of that procurement process is. So whatever happens, there will continue to be an ABODs for the foreseeable future, at least. I hope that answers your question. Uh, I suppose you're saying there will be a bus service, but you can't say who the operator will be. Uh, yes. Yeah, yeah. But you know, there would be a bus service. There would be, there would be the yeah. provision of ABODs to you. You would have, you would continue to enjoy sort of the benefits of ABODs and and, and the capabilities of ABODs as as it is. Um. Um. So yes, that that there would there would always be ABODs. Thank you. So actually, could we just ask the question then, and you can feel free to tell us, go and answer it. Does is ABOD owned by are the programming and all the stuff that we've seen deve uh, developed and um, demonstrated to us? Is that owned by the DFT and somebody else can alter it, or is it actually something that's your company's property? It's it, it, as far as I'm aware, it is Ito's IP. Yeah. Um. I think it's 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 a question we can we can it's it, it's a combination of both. I think ABODs have come as a result of uh, a, a collaboration with with Ito World and 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 DFT, um, where we own certain part of ABODs and you yeah. know, certain part of the IP uh, belong to Ito World. So um, whatever happens, like I said, you know we would we would there will be conversations that need to be had and. You know decisions that need to be made, but we are committed to providing the capability of ABODs to consumers and users of ABODs, um, you know, irrespective of what, whatever happens in, in the immediate future. Thank you. All right. So, anyone else got any more questions? No. OK, um, I'm going to be getting in touch with some of you afterwards if we could maybe just talk a bit more about the kind of the value of, of vehicle journeys and how we can improve it. I'd really like to drill down into that and then also compared to some of the other uh, incumbents to to maybe understand side by side how they can compare. Um, because I think this is a, this is a really powerful feature. It's it's really popular. Um, 
and I think there's so much potential here and you know we need your feedback in order to to really help it to fulfill its its potential um but if there's nothing else thank you all very much for joining and hopefully I'll see some of you next week when we're going to discuss all things BSIPs Thank you for watching this Artig webinar. To find out more about Artig and our work, then please visit our website at rtig.org.uk. Thank you.